Hey everybody, how's it going out there? Want to welcome everybody to the show. Man, we got a good one tonight. We got Josh from Adventure Roads. Man, I've been waiting to get Josh on here for a long time. Um, before we do that, I just want to tell you guys all, Monica is sick. Not sure what she's got going on, but uh, hopefully she'll be feeling better by next week. I sent one 1,000. How are you tonight? Appreciate you showing up. Really do. You know what time it is. It's white Russian camera time. So let's make ourselves a white Russian. Guys, pretty simple as we all know. Just add our ice. Add some vodka to it. Nothing crazy. About that much will do. Add a little Kahlua. We don't have to fill this thing all the way up. Add a little Kahlua. And you can use heavy cream or half and half. I use half and half. It's what I like. So there you guys go. There is our white Russian. Stir it up. All right, guys. Let's let's get on with the show. All right. Like I said, our guest tonight is Josh. And uh, hey, it looks like we got Craig on. Hey, Craig, how are you, brother? One thing I want to show you guys real quick, and I think this is just great. I This is the coolest thing in the whole world. Check, check this out. Steven from Cooking with Steven and Jacqueline made this for me, this thumbnail. Love it. Uh, God, that guy, I, he could do this for a living, I think. So, guys, with that said, let's bring Josh in. Josh, how are you doing tonight? Hey, I'm doing great. It's uh, nice to be here with you tonight uh, on the Dude's Kitchen. Right on. Well, we're glad to have you. Josh, what think about this thumbnail? My buddy uh, Stephen from Stephen, uh, Cooking with Stephen and Jacqueline made this. Uh, this is cool, I think. Yeah, I like it. Might have to uh, borrow him and see see what pictures I can send him, see what he can spruce up. There you go. Very I think nice. I, he's got a job there. Yeah, very nice. Yeah. Want to uh, uh, welcome uh, Topher from Whisk and Knives to the show. We're going to talk about him a little later on. We've got Jared from Frack Daddy Barbecue. Welcome. Lep from Leprechaun TV. Welcome, guys. Welcome. All right. So, Josh and I. Josh, are you ready for some questions? I am ready for some questions. All right. Where are you from? Where, 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 where were you born? I was, okay, so for one, I'm in Michigan. And Michigan just loves their geography by the hand. Oh, yes. So, yeah. Uh, so there's the thumb. We we are up near the uh, Pinky area. Okay. Right so on. I was born in southern Michigan, and basically about the creases below, they call them Flatlanders, and then we're northern Michigan, and then and then you have the the Upper Peninsula. So you have the big the the bridge that connects the lower peninsula and the upper peninsula. Gotcha. Um, they they call that the uh, mighty Mac, the Mackinac Bridge. Okay. And so if you're below the bridge, they call you trolls. And <laughs> if you're up in our area, we call the the city people, Detroit, and all them who come up here. We call them fudgies because they come up here and buy all the fudge. <laughs> okay, <laughs> that's great. I love that. Yeah. Cool. Yep. It looks like we got Daddy Dutch Barbecue on. Hey, Kent, how are you? Who knows who? Welcome. All right. Josh, you got any animals? Um, we had a English Mastiff for a long time, and she's been in some of our videos. Um, she is still living. She's she's quite elderly. She's like 10 and a half, so, which is pretty old for a Mastiff. Um, but we are now empty nesters. So we have a family who's often watched her and they're retired and have grandkids and we put her in her forever home with them and we've visited them a few times. It's just a good situation with our schedules and not having kids here to let her out and all that type of stuff. That's cool. So I'm real happy with the situation. Right on. Right on. Uncle Chuckles, how are you this evening? Thank you for showing up. Appreciate it. Other than your channel. 
What do you do for a living? What's the day job? The day job is a, uh, I'm a deputy in the uh, corrections division in Grand Traverse County, Traverse City, Michigan. Okay. How long have so you done I, that? I have, I'm going on 16 years. So it's pretty much everything from occasional warrant arrest, mainly working in the jail, doing the processing, sometimes uh, bailiff court work, and then also uh, prison transports. Um, so that's some of the general duties. So each, like today, I was running um, the control center, which is the security cameras and, and who's coming in, who's going out, which inmates are going to which sections, that type of stuff today. Doesn't sound real boring, actually. Every day is different. I bet. <laughs> yep. I bet. I bet. So when you were a kid, did you want to be a deputy or did you want to be something else? No. <laughs> no. Um, <laughs> I think we, I literally stumbled on the job. Um, one day we went camping and I picked up a uh, paper and this was, you know, almost back in 2005. So uh, yeah, I picked up a paper and we were camping and I said, Hey, they're hiring. Maybe I'll check it out when I get back. And then um, they were hiring uh, 10 people out of 600 applicants. And I was uh, fortunate enough to get the job. It's a good job. I actually enjoy the people part of it. Even with the uh, inmates, I've got a good rapport with the inmates. So that's cool. So, yeah, I, I enjoy that. I enjoy that part of it. Autumn Rhodes, I'm guessing this is your wife. Oh, Duke probably. the Hazard turned deputy. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I love it. I, I think it. everybody's got that inner bad boy where you, I mean, you know, within reason where you, where you pull for the bad guy on certain things, you know? Yeah, exactly. So, and guys, if uncle Steve's here, hello, uncle Steve, appreciate it. Uh, if you guys have any questions, like I said, Monica's not here today due to the flu. So just maybe put uh, hashtag dude or something like that, or hashtag questions and uh, make sure to get to them guys. <laughs> so, fascinating uh yeah i uh the bad guy yeah but yeah. then the bad guy goes to jail and you take care of him right right yeah <laughs> yeah i have i have seen i have seen about everything i mean it just it like it's kind of like the old paul harvey when paul harvey would give those stories oh yeah, yeah. and so then then each day it's like yeah they're real yep so Looks like we have my cousin Patty Joe cooking. Are you gonna hop on here, Patty? You got you got the link. You can be the the third wheel here, buddy. So Patrick Patty Joe cooking is actually a cousin of mine, and he lives in Melbourne, Australia. We're very distant cousins. Yeah, that's but, cool. Uh, one of these days, I'm I. He and I are going to be uh, the bad boys of Melbourne for about two weeks. I have a feeling. <laughs> If I could go to another country, Australia would be right up towards the top of the list. That's for sure. As far as a visit. I agree. Totally. Yeah. Yep. And it's, uh, you know, like just go down there when it's winter here, go down there because it's summer there. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yep. Right on. So what inspired you to create your channel? Um, I think I almost we. I did one in uh, 2015. Uh, my wife, my wife and I, we just kind of put together a, a video and, and just for fun. Um, I think it was a motorcycle trip video or something I might have did with some of the guys. But uh, and then I think right towards the end of uh, the kids being done with school, just one day we thought, you know what, we do so much different things. It's like if nobody watches it, we got memories and let's just do them. There you go. That's a great, great way to look at it. You're absolutely right. So absolutely right. And I, I think I know the answer to this next question, but um, where did the channel name come from? <laughs> <laughs> I think it's just our lifestyle. It's like um, uh, I met, I, I don't have time for all of it tonight, but like I met my wife from out your way, Montana. We met online back in 2000. So it's 20 years. Cool. And um, the Red I Lodge area by chance? What's that? The Red Lodge area by chance? No, um, that's another story. But uh, uh, she, her her mother was um, in the uh, Air Force up in uh, Great Falls, Montana. Oh, my stepdad was stationed there years so ago. So then, um, anyways, I flew out there, met her family, and 
we, we met on the internet in April of 2000. I was in a uh, fantasy baseball league and then I met her on a, uh, I was looking for some baseball stuff um, cause we were, I was in a shop and this internet was brand new to me back then. And, uh, I ran across her, um, on a, uh, I don't know. I think I seen travel and Christian and whatever else. I thought, well, I'll just check out these rooms. I had no idea what they were. And so we just got talking about life and whatever else. And one thing led to the next. And, uh, so April 14th of 2000, I, we met online and then that's just before pictures and all that stuff. We didn't even know what each other looked like for like a month. And then um, I ended up flying out there Memorial Day and she flew out here in June. And six months later, we got married. That is a cool story. Yeah. Right on. So, so it's pretty wild. Is it your brother-in-law who lives in the Red Lodge area then? or My brother lives... His his in laws live in Red Lodge, and my brother met his wife in Montana before I met mine, and it was it's a pretty crazy story. So they've been married; uh, they're going on twenty or nineteen years. We're on twenty, and um, pretty crazy stuff. That's cool. Ah, uh, looks like we have cooking with Stephen and Jacqueline. Stephen, welcome. Do we have Charlie in here? Oh my goodness, Charlie, welcome. Appreciate it. Uh, just a little plug for next week. Uh, the guests are Stephen from Cooking It with Stephen and Jacqueline real quick. And then he's going to come on and talk about some Trini style food. And then we have Charlie. So right on. Yeah, we were in Red Lodge this summer for a wedding. And I fell in love with that town. That is oh, I love that town. little town. Yeah. There's a little town that's, uh, it would be west of Red Lodge called Absorkey. And that's where my brother's in-laws live out in that area. Okay. And my brother is a uh, high school history teacher up in Lewistown, Montana. Oh, that that's up there, ways. Oh, yeah, yeah. Gotcha. Yeah, he was history teacher of the year for Montana in 2018. And he almost got it for the nation, but yeah, we used oh. to we used to travel around a lot together when we were younger. So that's kind of where the adventure comes in. We've kind of been all over the place. Just we've always just like getting out and seeing things and doing things. That's cool. Looks like we have DJ Video Scratch Channel. This is a guy I met yesterday on uh, Leprechaun TV's live. Welcome. Appreciate it. Um, well, Josh, um, how long have you had the channel then? I would say serious now where we have actually start trying to put out content on a consistent basis. I think we're closing in on two years now. Wow. And one state to go. One state to go. I need Alaska. Oh, you should come with me next year. Yes. I, I try to do it every year. I think right now, tentatively, um, I think we're kind of got a goal of 2022. Um, but I guess if the pieces were to fall together, I'd go about any time. But yeah. It's a totally different world up there. I love it. Love yeah. it. I love it. So, so you, definitely, if I get a chance to go, I will probably at least hit you up if you're not there, and, and, and yeah. at least get some, at least get some tips. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Well, if you if we go to Kodiak Island, I give you tips. That's the only yeah. place like that in Anchorage. Yeah. So, so to give you a little history on Josh, he was one of the first uh, YouTube channels I subscribed to, and vice, and he was one of my first subscribers, and. He said something to me that has always stuck with me, and that's one of the reasons why I started this show. And he told me that us little guys have to stick together, and that's what this show's about: is just getting those, getting us the smaller channels out there, so other people can see them, you know, interact with them, and that's what it's all about. So thank you for that piece of advice. I I really like that. And I remember also that we missed you in Yellowstone by less than a week. I remember hitting you up and going, are you in Yellowstone? And you're like, no, I was there early last week. Like, that would have oh, been great. Man. That would have been really cool. Yeah, that would have been awesome. Well, maybe sometime. I'm sure we're going to cross paths at some point. That'd be pretty oh, cool. Sure. Well, you have the uh, Airbnb. Yes. And that's one of these days, I'm going to, I'll definitely stay there. So right now, that's where I'm at right now. Okay. Um, because we have better internet here. <laughs> oh, so hey guys, look at this. Look at this background. Yes. Who wouldn't want to stay at this Airbnb? I'll be there tomorrow, Josh. Yes. Seriously. So, 
right now I am in the upstairs where we've where we've lived, um, but we are in the middle of getting ready to convert this space because right now our Airbnb is the lower level, which it's 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 its own entrance, um, own locking door. Most of the time we're not even here. We might come here and check check something or something like that. But uh, we have another place about 20 mile, 20 minutes from here. And so anyways, the lower levels, two bedrooms, we have a video with that. And then, um, so yeah, we're at a hundred reviews now and doing really good with it. So for, for Christmas time, I got a friend who retired out of the uh, air force. Who's going to stay here for a week. Cause they, their family's got a small home and it's going to be two brothers and their families coming to stay here. So um, cool. they're going to, they're going to use the entire house. We're, we're going to have it set up for them. We, we have a pool table downstairs, and uh, this is a real wood fireplace behind me. And downstairs, there's a, a gas fireplace. Okay. So is that the one? Is that the fireplace that uh, you had on your channel not too long ago? No, that's out at the uh, what we call the ranch property. Okay. So we're getting ready to get that hooked up and probably do a video with the people putting it together. I guess. Okay. Looks so like your dad's I, here. Scott Rhodes is here. Oh, Welcome, yep. Scott. Appreciate <laughs> it. Thank you, everybody, for uh, being here. I really do appreciate it. I think I think that's part of the like like um, our Airbnb. It's called Adventure Cottage North, and we have kayaks and we live on a small lake here. But um, we've had people from like the Netherlands to all over the world that's came and we've taken them kayaking or out to dinner. I mean, we've had, we've had some fun relationships that we've had. And, and I, I think I think it's just fun to meet people from all walks of life that come and and I think when people are on vacation, even whenever we travel, most people, how can you be in a bad mood on vacation? You know, exactly. Yep. So no, I, we stay at Airbnbs. I love them. Yeah, it's really fun do. to just try new places. Yeah, it is. What is uh, what is your where's your favorite place to visit? I, I have a favorite place. A lot of people I know do. What is Josh's favorite place to go visit? Um, I'm not one that can sit still real well. I do try, which that's even amazing. I can even hunt. That's about the only time I can <laughs> sit still. So um, I don't know for, for like for Michigan, for, for like to take a, take a two hour drive or something. Um, it's kind of fun to go up to the bridge. It's a real pretty area. The islands out there. Um, Mackinac Island is a place with uh, no cars. It's just horse and buggy only, wow. um, or bicycles or walk, or you can get like taxi horse and buggies. So it's kind of a fun place to go up in that area just to relax for a, like a Saturday during the summer. It's kind of like going back in time. It's like an um, Amish community or something? Or? No, no, it's, it's like Victorian. Um, but, That's but it's, cool. It's out in Lake Huron, and you can see the bridge out there. The waters are blue. I mean, summertime, it's just a beautiful place to go. So um, I don't know if it's my favorite, but for Michigan, for near here, it's kind of one of my favorites to, to take a day drive to. Um, but uh, I love Montana. I love the mountains out west. Um, I think sometimes when you live in an area, you kind of get used to what you have, and it's always fun to explore something that you don't see as much. Right. That's kind of where I'm at a lot of times, mm -hmm. but we do have a great area here with all the lakes and stuff like that. There's some beautiful lakes around here. Right on. Right on. So you've done a lot of traveling. I, I yep. follow you, your motorcycle trips and you're in your truck, like when you took your daughter off to school, yeah, et cetera. Can you pinpoint, there's actually one I thought was really cool too. You guys were on a, like an outlook and and you and autumn are there and you can just see forever but what is your favorite moment traveling if josh could say this is it oh boy um i don't know we have some funny moments i mean I, sometimes sometimes i wish that i could have a camera crew following especially if i'm doing like a bike trip with like my uh, buddy uh romero rodriguez um mm -hmm. Sometimes yeah. there's there's some stuff you just get rolling about, you know. Um, we've even rode in uh, year up in Idaho area, um, Preston, Idaho, where they filmed like Napoleon Dynamite and stuff. For my and daughter, he, my wife. He, and uh, and uh, Rodriguez was running around with the uh, Vote for Pedro shirt. 
<laughs> um, so, I mean, we have a lot of fun, you know, we poke each other and, and, and we have a lot of fun. Um, we, uh, we dumped our bikes one time in Yellowstone. We actually, we, we, uh, hit each other. We were going like 15 mile an hour, 20 mile an hour, and we both dumped them. Oh. Um, but that's when, you know, you're real good friends when you still get along. And, um, and, and now we just joke about it all the time. Gotcha. That's funny. So, um, as far as, I don't know. Um, we've taken uh, kids, like we took kids like three years uh, from Michigan all the way down to Oklahoma to a, uh, a kid's church camp. And it was like a Western camp where they uh, could uh, ride horses and stuff like that. And, and it was like an old West town. It was a really cool camp for kids. And the one year we bought a van that held like 15 passenger and on the way home, we broke down. It was like hundred degree heat. And we had to cross the interstate to get to a, like to a McDonald's. And so that was quite the adventurous trip. But when, when we took trips like that with kids, um, we didn't do any McDonald's, no Burger Kings. It was all mom and pop restaurants, um, go to civil war battlefields, go to, I mean, go find a uh, mill out in the middle of the way. I mean, just oddball stops, you know? Um, sure. so stuff like that. That's cool. That is cool. So oh, on one of your recent trips, you met an old vet. Yes. From Vietnam, I believe. Yes. Tell us about his bottle opener. That was, I thought that was awesome. Yeah, that was kind of funny because um, so we're in Texas. So I, I kind of won if we, you know, if, if you're out in Maine, you go get some lobster. If you're down in Texas, you get some steak or some Mexican food, that type of stuff. You kind of go with the region, I guess, what they're known sure. for. So anyways, we're down there. It's a hot day, 100 degrees. And I decided to, I told, uh, I told Ram, his name's Romero. I said, hey, I'm going to buy one of these uh, Mexican pops. So I bought one of these Mexican pops and I'm getting ready to walk out the store. And I go back to the clerk and I said, hey, was, the cap was on tight. And I said, hey, do you got a bottle opener? And she goes, uh, no, I don't. And I'm kind of like looking around. And I already bought it and I don't think she's going to. So, so uh, anyways, I was going to use the countertop or something, try to get it off. Then uh, the old boy was sitting right there and he goes, I got a bottle opener. Bring it over here. And so I go over there and he's, and I get talking with him and um, he had his issued Vietnam bottle opener spoon. It was like, kind of like the Swiss army knife that they gave him. It was what they issued him. So this has been, that's probably a 50 year old uh, bottle opener. So he, he started telling me, uh, I, I, I just ask questions and, and, and I try to be, if, you know, I really, um, I respectfully, sure. um, granted you can always offend somebody, but I really try to be respectful of uh, anybody. And, and so I just got talking to him a little bit and um, he shared with me how he, uh, he was a uh, purple heart veteran and he had been uh, shot and he showed on that video, I think he even showed the little scar on his arm and, yep. um, and stuff like that. And he also said that he used to play um, pre-shows. I don't remember off the top of my head, but like, I think for Tanya Tucker and yeah, I forgot about may, that. Yeah. He might've even mentioned, uh, he might've even mentioned Willie Nelson. I can't remember, but he mentioned another in the video. He mentioned another singer. I believe that he had used to, um, do the pre-shows for. Mm -hmm. So I thought that was pretty cool. Yeah. I don't know. So, cool experience. So, you know, it's just, when you're out there and you're talking to people, the people you meet you never know the person next to you what their story is until you ask yeah you know? yep i always i mean everybody's everybody has a story and everybody's important i mean it's it i'm a people person so i mean i i i like to just kind of hear hear other people's stories you know and i think it helps you grow as a person as well too so you can kind of understand where some people are coming from as well. And, and if you can laugh or poke somebody a little bit and have some fun with it as well, it's always good too. There you go. That's how you can tell if the person's likable or not. Yeah. Yep. In my opinion. Oh my goodness. We have the third person Hi. online with this. This was, this is my cousin and he is actually supposed to be filling in for Monica. Monica, okay. boy, that, uh, that operation you had finally, it really took, took, I'm, I'm, Glad to see it. So Patrick is uh, going to be running uh, questions if he's, if any questions pop up. So oh, that's okay. Uh, I want to. Uh, oh, sorry. 
Hello. Uh, I want to say hello to me? Fat Kids Barbecue. Wow. Dano's. Uh, Dano. Dano is here. Appreciate it. In the kitchen with Karen. I appreciate it. Thank you, everybody, for showing up. And off Patrick goes. Or should I call him Monica? Not sure. <laughs> uh, so, uh, in your travels, what would you consider the most exotic place you've ever gone? Um, I think maybe this last trip to Texas. I mean, because it's, it was so remote. And I think maybe maybe a little bit considering that we're in this uh, COVID stuff going on and everything being shut down and we just did it anyway. Um, I mean, it was very, very remote. We didn't see any bikers for like, hard, I think we saw one biker in two or three days when we were down in some of those areas. Um, and we even had uh, one guy said, yeah, don't break down down there because you're not going to get any help. I mean, we rode all the <laughs> way down to the Mexico border, um, down to Terra Lingua and um, Lajitas. Um, so that Terra Lingua, that that uh, little bar restaurant called the Starlight Theater, that was uh, quite that was a kind of a very unique type of place to go to a restaurant. It was like it was kind of like going back in time, like you know, like 1890 or something and these rock walls and um, stuff like that. And there was an old cowboy up there playing on the porch and it was black. I mean, it's so black. You could see every star in the sky out there. I mean, you could see as far as you could see of nothing. I mean, it, pretty, pretty desolate country. So it's, it's like being at my uh, in-laws. They live south of Pocatello, Idaho, which is north of Preston. And at yeah. night you can see everything. Yeah. Yeah. Anybody, if you got any questions, uh, Monica, a.k.a. Patrick, will uh, be asking or, or looking at them. We, Mon we Monica did. just had an operation. She looks good. We did do a Hawaii trip in 2014. Um, so I don't know. We I, So we were married 14 years at that point. And uh, anyways, I'm glad we didn't do it at our honeymoon, one of those big ones. We just did something around here. Um, we just, you know, went up, you know, a few days type of short trip honeymoon, but I think we appreciated it more doing it then. And we hit, we did, we just did a Wahoo. We hit uh, the bamboo forest, saw the whales, hit the beaches, snorkeled, um, ate some Hawaiian food. And then uh, we also went to Pearl Harbor oh, and I had a, oh. uh, I had a cousin, a uh, fourth cousin who died on the uh, Arizona at Pearl Harbor. And uh, we got a postcard uh, that was sent to the family that, that's uh, post stamped off of the uh, USS Arizona in April of that year before it wow. happened. Yeah, I did so it, on that. So it was kind of neat. Wow, that's crazy. Patrick, have you met uh, Josh from Adventure Roads? Not in person, but yeah, I've definitely watched that. And that uh, veteran video was sensational. I loved it. I agree. Yeah, no, so I'm definitely, I've joined your channel, Josh, and uh, looks good. But that that one with the veteran, you know, opening the bottle, fantastic. Yep. Mm. So, Josh, I'm sure you have eaten at many a place. What is your hands down favorite place? Uh, I think Cena remember you going to a steakhouse in like Oklahoma or something like that. That looked absolutely amazing. That's a really good one. Um, it's called the Cattlemen's in uh, Oklahoma City. And I think for the setting, because it's in the uh, old west part of Oklahoma City where they, the old cattle yards are at, all, all behind the restaurants there. Mm -hmm. And that restaurant back in the early 1900s, um, somebody was playing a game of poker and then they lost, they lost the, uh, to the uh, restaurant. They lost the uh, restaurant, a game of poker. But anyways, it's been there for like 100 years. So it's it's just an old school steakhouse. But an, I've been there like two or three times now, and it's just an excellent steakhouse. Um, so that's one of my favorites. Um, probably one of my least favorite um, uh, eating times ever. Um, one day, I just like to just get in the car and say, hey, let's go try this place. And so it'll be nothing to either hop on the bike or get in a car and like, hey, we're going to drive two hours and go have lunch or go have dinner. And so uh, 
there was a couple years ago uh, after church, I asked my mom and dad if they wanted to go to this uh, buffet place. And it was, it's kind of way out in the country, farm country here. So we go down there and uh, it's called Maxfield. It's a pretty good restaurant. But, um, you Autumn know, agrees, we, by the way, what's that? Autumn agrees, by oh. the way. <laughs> so anyways, uh, you know how, um, on a, on a buffet, a lot of times they have the jellos and puddings and stuff together. Yeah. So I decided I had already kind of ate my stuff and I thought I was getting some uh, chocolate mousse. And so anyways, I sit down and we're all at the table and everybody's, uh, everybody's eating. And I, I grabbed a great big spoonful and I put it in my mouth and, um, I couldn't get it out of my mouth fast enough. It's like sticking, <laughs> sticking on the roof of my mouth. And my mom goes, what's the matter? And I said, I don't know what's in this. It's nasty. I mean, I, I mean, and, um, I'm like trying to spit out half of it. I've already swallowed. <laughs> and um, the waitress is off on the side laughing. And then um, she comes over and she goes, uh, you must have ate the liver pate. Oh, oh no. <laughs> yeah. Very nice. <laughs> so, so, oh. so anyways, I have never ate that before. And I mean, you're sitting there eating a nice meal and you think, okay, I'll go have a little chocolate mousse and just a big old spoonful. And I had no idea what it was. And, and, uh, boy, that I don't know how somebody eats that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's delicious. That's a great story. That, great. <laughs> that sounds like something you'd make Patrick. <laughs> oh, I eat it all the time. <laughs> all the time, man. All the time. Uh, Scott says you had to be there, but no, I can imagine. I can only imagine the look on your face. Yeah, I would probably have something similar. Ah. So yeah. yeah. So yeah. So, so the point being, sometimes my curiosity can get me in a little trouble. <laughs> I bet. <laughs> uh, I want to welcome recipes with Risa. How are you, my friend? Risa. And, yeah, Risa's in, and Rick Hi, from Risa. Rick's Barbecue and Specialty. Guy's moving from Mexico back to Texas. Uh, looking forward to oh, meeting him soon. So, oh, and and Laura from Cypress. Laura from yeah, Laura, man, we got a great turnout. People like you, Josh. <laughs> great turnout. Well, make sure you click subscribe, hit like, and share with your friends. <laughs> I'll go. take all the help I can get. <laughs> so, um, what's your favorite dish to make? Oh, liver pate. <laughs> no, no liver pate. Um, probably, I like to make a brisket if I have a Saturday off. You know, like a long day to just sit out there and cook a brisket. Um, I like to do it. A uh, guy at my work kind of, I like to season it all up and cook it with a can of Coke. Um, okay. And uh, I, I like that really well. Um I also like uh, some some of our like venison beef nachos. I like that real well. Ooh, that um, so I'm a meat guy. Definitely, I'm a carnivore. <laughs> um, one of yeah. my favorite barbecue places is um, Arthur Bryant's in uh, Kansas City, Kansas. Um, they got all the old boys there. Um, that's uh, cooking them and everything. I've, I've been there a few times, and it's been really, really good. Was that one of those places that's got like the guy that's worked there for like 40 years yeah. and mopping stuff? And, yeah. yeah. I and mean, I think what a I, job. I, there's, you know, some restaurants too may may not always be the best food, but some of them you go to for the experience. Sure. Um, and one of them I can remember is uh there's an amusement park that's in Ohio that's like six hours from here. And so one time we took a bunch of kids down to this amusement park and I took them to this place in Ann Arbor. That's where uh, University of Michigan's at. Okay. And there's a burger place there. They call it uh, Blimpy Jim's. And it's kind of cafeteria style. It's very old. It looks like 1970 in there. <laughs> and you get your tray and they're frying up burgers. And they basically, they talk really fast and you're going to get whatever burger you're going to get if you don't answer their questions fast. And that's about, <laughs> and that's about the way it is. <laughs> and, awesome. um, 
And so like, like um, we had kids there, you know, these are uh, teenagers, 13, 17 years old. So these guys in there, they've been in there a while and they really know how to kind of talk to smack and, and jab them and stuff. And so they're talking fast. And this one kid, they have like glass bottle pops and one kid, you know, he's, he's got this pop and he's, he's like, um, you know, 80 pounds soaking wet. And he's like, kid, I don't think you need a diet. And he goes, can't you read? And, uh, he, you know, he, he, he gives them like a real Coke cause the kid actually grabbed his diet Coke and, <laughs> and you know, and I mean, they just talk really fast and the whole atmosphere, it's just entertaining to listen to, to, to embark at everybody. So I want to welcome Cody Rhodes. He is uh, saying that place was crazy. Yeah. So Cody also mentioned your brisket said it was killer. What's your secret? Um, I like to season it really good overnight. Um, it's been a little bit since I've made the last one, but uh, probably we can do barbecue in the winter, but it's just, it's just especially cooking on wood, it gets a little harder to maintain those temperatures in the uh, real cold. Um, so, but uh, yeah, usually I like to season it really good the night before and then um, do about uh, six hours and kind of keeping a, a good base on it with like an apple juice and then about the last six hours, put it in a tin, uh, tin foil pan and cover it with foil. They kind of call that, I guess, like the Texas cheat. And then usually it's got a real good smoke flavor and super tender. Gotcha. So do you, do you have like a go-to rub it or do you make your own rub or? I'm kind of like a rub and, and a sauce guy. So I like to constantly try new ones type of thing. So um, but yeah, I've had some from like, uh, like Arthur Bryant's I've brought home before. I have I, I need to try to sometime order some of this uh, gator shake that you've been doing. I can say, I got a deal for you. I'll, I'll talk yeah. to uncle Steve and <laughs> so see, I, yep, gator so, shake and the competition cow powder. All of his competition products are the bomb. Yes. So if I can it's just, them. it's <laughs> just fun to try different ones, but yeah, that's definitely one I'd love to, uh, um, try. Right on. We got Kenneth from What's New Barbecue. Welcome. Kenneth has a uh, Facebook uh, show and uh, like North Texas. You have to remind me what it is, Kenneth. But man, they those guys are cranking out briskets all the time and great awesome. stuff. So, so now my wife Otta makes very good enchiladas and lasagna. She makes those two mm. things really well. Nice. You can't go wrong with a good enchilada or a lasagna. I mean, seriously. Yeah, Man. it's it. They're kind of, to me, they're kind of like meatloafs, right? They just three yeah. three of them. It's you either got it or you don't. Yeah, and I, I've had people go, "Oh, my enchiladas are awesome," and you're like, "Oh yeah, they're okay. They're great. They're great." And you're like, "But a good <laughs> enchilada, there's nothing yeah. quite like it." Yeah, yeah. So, your favorite dish is brisket. Uh, I dig that. What, what kind of uh, uh, do you? I know you have a Weber kettle. What kind of uh, uh, smoker do you have? Ours is, I think that's partly what our channel's about as well. Like the smoker outside is a homemade one. Mm -hmm. The wheels are off an old horse-drawn manure wagon, and I've had that about 15 years. Yeah, I, um, I was hoping you'd get there because that's cool. So I think that's part of the channel as far as like, like, I've cooked on that before and then I've uh, tried to announce the guy who made it and, mm -hmm. and maybe put his Facebook link in there or stuff like, I, I like to see the, I guess you see, you know, like you say, the little guy doing good, or maybe it inspires somebody that maybe can't get that particular thing, but maybe they know somebody in their area and know, know a welder or something say, Hey, this guy has this, can you do something similar or, or tweak it to how they like it? Correct. Tell us a little bit about that smoker. That's cool. Mine is, it's like I said, it's on horse-drawn uh, manure wagon wheels. Uh, they're big steel wheels. And um, basically, it's like two sides. It's got two two different lids that, that come down. So one side can be a warmer or, or, or you cook two things at once on it type of thing. Um, my dad has a very similar one. My dad makes really good ribs. Um, but mm -hmm. my dad's is... His is probably a little bit bigger as far as one side. Like if you were to put his against mine, 
it's made about the same, but um, mine's two sided. His is just one, but his one side's bigger than either of my two sides. So there's kind of pros and cons to both. Gotcha. What is the heat source? Uh, I like to do charcoal and um, a lot of times like maple wood that we have around here or an apple. Maple wood. Uh, yeah, apple's fairly common. Maple yep. wood. I like that. Yeah, I've used maple. Um, and then uh, especially like if I'm doing ribs, I'll use like maybe some maple because um, okay. we have we have a lot of maple in abundance. But um, yeah, uh, the the apple wood we got, we have quite a bit of apples too. So. Okay, I know somebody did a video once. Uh, maple, uh, they did baby back ribs with like they put maple syrup or man, that looks amazing. But I could get mm -hmm. you know the smell from from the maple wood would or the the smoke from the maple wood would do something similar. I bet that's just phenomenal. Yeah, mm -hmm. right on. Looks like we have Jill from Yester Kitchen. Hey, Jill. She's going to be a guest uh, in about a month. So welcome, Jill. Oh. Appreciate it. Scott from Dr. Tastes Good Barbecue. He was a guest a couple weeks ago. Uh, that guy's a busy boy. So uh, how would you describe your video style? If you had two to three words, how would you style? Like mine, uh, fat man cooking, you know, something like that. <laughs> 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 dumb boy cooking <laughs> something i don't know um i don't know we're like <laughs> we're eclectic we can't even we're we're just i guess you never know what's going to be on there next mm -hmm. um it's i mean we just like we really enjoy life i mean like this is one of the things i like is because meeting guys like you like you're one of those guys that Hey, let's go out to dinner tonight and, you know, we'll have a good time and some laughs and, you know, and might not see each other for five years, but could do it again the next time, you know? Exactly. Um, so, yeah, I think our channel is, it's probably going to be a lot seasonal because, because we're in a seasonal area as far as things that we're doing. Um, maybe sometimes we'll cook up something just because it sounds fun. Um, and sometimes maybe just talk about people, talk about uh, what's going on today here or, Sure. Um, so yeah, you hit on earlier, you were talking about, uh, cooking and it's seasonal. Does it get like super cold there? So like you take out the Weber kettle and you'd really struggle making something with it. No, I mean, you could still do burgers, steaks, that type of thing. You can do briskets or ribs. It's just, it's definitely harder to keep some of that heat up. You got to keep an eye on it a little bit better. Um, and plus, and plus it's just not as comfortable being out there for that long. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. <clears throat> true. True. You got a lot of videos. What's your biggest blooper? Um, I don't know what the biggest blooper would be. I probably some editing errors. Um, I think I seen one, one of the last times I had some flashing going on. I don't even know how I did that. Um, flashing. Yeah. Like some sort of an editing error. I don't know if I had something oh, blended okay. over the other thing. I you were talking um, about maybe somebody's flashing in and like, oh. <laughs> yeah. So I think it's just, I. now what I don't know how to do is like what you do, like putting that little uh, subscription thing in the corners. I got to still that's figure that, that out. Oh, that, that's easy. That's, that's, that's easy. on YouTube. That's on YouTube. So. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. So I think, for, I think for 2021, I think um, we're going to try to tweak a couple things like that. I mean, I think it's just little things at a time. Sure. Yeah. Definitely the way. Yeah. And you, if, as long as you're not in a hurry to do everything all at once, you know, you just one day you get up and say, you know what, I'm going to do that today. And you just do it, you know. Yeah. Doesn't all because it's it's tempting to sort of get really impatient. It has happened to me. Oh, I want to do everything now. Get it all. Get the artwork and the logos and everything. You just one step at a time. Yeah. 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 So once again, you've done a lot of videos. What's your favorite one so far? <clears throat> um, I don't know. I think maybe my favorite. Sometimes I'll be honest, I'll laugh at myself. I can just sit there and just kind of laugh at myself. I don't care. I, you have um, to, right? Yeah. Um, so I don't know. I kind of like the uh, the the flat out fun one 
Um, cause I, I, I put the one guy on there. He can fix anything. So like on Dukes of Hazard, they had their mechanic called Cooter, right? Cooter, yeah. <laughs> so anyways, this guy I call Cooter Jim cause he, his name's Jim and he can fix anything. Gotcha. <laughs> and so I always, I always just call him Cooter Jim. And so then, um, I just, I just kind of, uh, randomly threw him on the video he, and, uh, so that, that was kind of fun. Um, I'm hoping in time to get uh, like Romero talking a little bit more because he's one of those guys you get at the dinner table and start telling stories. He's one of the funniest people you could ever talk with. Um, right on. So, I'm, so, oh, and that, maybe one of the f fun ones was that hypothermia or bus too. The, when, when we had that winter storm here and, and, they always say you can't drive in this type of stuff. And I have the uh, Grand Mark Marquee, which is a two wheel drive car. And I, and I drive that to work all the time on icy roads when everybody else is driving four wheel drives a lot of times. <laughs> okay. So that, that I video, think I remember I that have. one. It's called yeah. hypothermia or bus. So that one I did have a good time with it. And so <laughs> a lot of people around town were kind of laughing at that one and the uh, toilet paper video. I'll have to, I don't recall that one. Toilet paper. Yeah, the mystery toilet paper where I was throwing because uh, of the, the toilet paper shortage. Um, I was putting some uh, uh, toilet paper out on the side of the road to let people pick up. Yes, I, and now I remember. Yep, yep. <laughs> oh, that was awesome. I did one where I took a paper towel and cut it in thirds. <laughs> yeah, I remember that. <laughs> You're right on. Oh, I remember that one. I remember that one. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. I haven't yeah. seen your one though, Josh. How long ago was that one that you did? That would have been probably in the springtime, maybe May, somewhere in there. Right. Yeah, that's yeah. yeah. yeah it happened it's here too. Like people, it was, it was, yeah. people just bought all the toilet paper. Yeah, we we got the restrictions here in Idaho where you can only buy two packages now and all that good stuff. Mm. So. Uh, Is that that's still happening there? Oh yeah, it's crazy. How's it? How's it in your neck yeah. of the woods, Josh? It's crazy. Uh, we've, uh, we've just come out of six months of a lockdown, and uh, who knows, man? Day by day. Yeah. How about you guys, Josh? Yeah. Um, they today was the start again, where they're putting the uh, restaurants on lockdown, and it's pretty frustrating. Yeah, it's tough. So I feel real. Yeah. I, I, I'm there with you. I feel for him. My uh, son and sister both work at the same restaurant, and they're looking at shutting them down again. It's, and this yeah. time, they don't have that extra security with uh, unemployment. No. You know, it's like $350 a week isn't going to really get you very far. No. Especially, you know, especially mm -hmm. when you have a $1,200 house payment. Seriously. Mm -hmm. so, right. Yeah. So... What if, if you could look at all the barbecue, whether it be the places you've been to, like Bryant's or uh, the what was it, the stockyard? Yeah. Or or even the place down the road at your house. What was your what would be your favorite barbecue experience? Um another one that was really good was um it's called Max Speed Shop in Charlotte, North Carolina. And uh, I went there for work. I went to a, a large jail there for a jail conference. And um, when I got off the plane, I asked the taxi guy, I said, what's, what's your favorite barbecue place? He said, Max Speed Shop. And then when I got to the hotel, I asked the lady at the hotel, I said, what's the best barbecue shop? She's like, Max Speed. I heard it from about four people, different people, different place. You got to go, right? Yeah, you got to go. And we ended up going there, I think, uh, two two times in about two days. It was so good. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, um, you know, a restaurant is good when you go there twice. When we were in Red Lodge. We went to that uh, Italian restaurant back to back. It, it's good. There's a – Michigan has one really good one that I like. It's called um, Down in Jackson, Michigan. And that's where we take um, prisoners that are going to prison. And down the road from there, there's a barbecue place. It's called West Texas. And the guy 
Um, the guy, he actually passed away this year, unfortunately, but they, they have massive smokers there and he does a really good barbecue, probably the best I've had in Michigan. And, um, the guy, I'm, the guy was probably four or 500 pounds, but super nice guy. And they got, they got great employees there and, and it's in an atmosphere of an old, uh, it's an old warehouse. So the whole setting is really cool in there too. Very cool. Yeah. Very cool. Mm. I want to welcome Mike Montoya, Smoking Mary's Rack Barbecue. Thank you, my brother, for showing up. Always good to see you on here. Josh, you ever deal with trolls on your channel or on Facebook? I've been getting them on Facebook lately. When I did my Chicago dog, one of the guys said the pro first thing was, first problem, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, oh, good Lord. Um. I'm not monetized yet, but I, I've got another guy I follow, and, and he's been pulling for me to get monetized. Who knows if I, I'm like halfway there, I guess, as far as hours in a year, a little over halfway. Gotcha. Um, but he said he said it'll get worse if you get monetized. Um, oh, really? <laughs> I, I guess I don't, I don't really care what people think. Um, I do get an occasional thumbs down, and I know when I'm watching a video um, – like say you're making some dish that I absolutely couldn't stand. I would probably still even let your whole video play and I'll probably still give you a thumbs up just because it's, it, it would have to be just something just absolutely atrocious to society for me to give it a thumbs down. Yeah. Um, if I don't like um, it, I just move on. I'm so happy to hear that because my next video is a liver pate video. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I might give you a You'll watch it twice. I might have to. Oh, that's so funny. Uh, Long's Quest is here. Appreciate you showing up, yep. Skip. Really do. Yeah. Yep. Hi, Skip. Uh, yeah. I, yeah, I just – lately, I'm not monetized either. I'm I'm just over the 50% hump this week. And I – all of a sudden, it just seems like – I don't know. Some videos are are more risque than others, like the Chicago dog, right? People are very passionate about their Chicago dog. And the meatloaf one was another one. It was like back to back. And you're just like, come on, people. This is food. I'm sorry that, like I told this guy, I'm sorry that I am not going to buy 10 cases of Vienna hot dogs. I'm not going to buy eight packages of Vienna hot dog buns. You know, It yeah. is what it is, guys. Seriously. So. Um, I My did actually. Right tip there. Yeah, my last video, I had I had uh, one person that uh, didn't like my hunting video, and I and um, I got a deer. Um, I didn't. Uh, I guess I didn't show anything gory with it, but still didn't I like. Didn't the, still didn't like the fact that I took it, and I just and I just said, well, this is one of those things I do, and um, and then I just said, also, I said we actually we actually do a lot more for the herd than, than, than hurt them. Um, cause we do food plots and other type of things. And, and, uh, and I'm on 130 acres out there and a lot of land around us. And, and one isn't, that, that's not even nothing. Gotcha. So, yeah, but guess, guess what? It means that they're watching it. Yeah. There you go. So, yeah. I, I, if you get a bad comment and this, and they're going through it, they're saying, Oh, I'd, minute two minutes and 57 and then four minutes you did that wrong they've watched it that's great you just right. say <laughs> exactly thanks for watching yeah. thanks for watching <laughs> don't let the door hit you yeah that's right thanks for because, watching i mean if i like you if i if i watch something that i don't like i just don't comment i i look at it you hmm. guys are gonna not like things i do i'm gonna probably not like things you do sometimes i don't even like things i don't i do myself how, how, I'm however, you. I'm going to uh, chew that. My dad's always taught us this, um, chew the hay and leave the sticks. There's always usually more good than bad. Yeah. yeah. True. <clears throat> and the, the pate I'm going to make is raw liver. <laughs> <laughs> I'm eat it on camera. <laughs> <laughs> Two likes. Hey, send me, the, send me the link. I'll watch it for you. <laughs> Put it on loop. loop. Yeah, there you go. I'll there probably you have go. nightmares for a week. 
All right. Well, Josh, if somebody was going to make a movie about you, who would play you? Um, I love asking this question. I I'm got kind Danny of a, DeVito last time. but I don't really know. I'm kind of an old soul, but um, I was just watching him the other night, and I always kind of liked him. So um, I probably like, like Robert Duvall, um, kind of like the uh, – he kind of plays that good guy with the edge. Yeah. Uh, um, and I just like that fun with stuff like that. Um, like when he did the uh, movie Open Range, the Western, he was he kind of. Oh, great movie. Great movie. Yeah, he's buying the uh, he he's buying the chocolate in the store and then giving it to the owners, you know, because because yeah. they couldn't afford it themselves. Correct. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Uh, no, that would be a good one. Yeah, I, I, I could see that. Absolutely. Um, Robert Duvall is great. Wasn't he in the first True Grit? He, he, I think you might be right with John Wayne. Yeah. My dad would know maybe if he puts a comment on there. I don't know if he's on here or not. But I think he was one of the bad guys in True Grit, I believe. I do like a lot of old Westerns. Um, oh, yeah. Um, you were talking about uh, restaurants earlier, kind of an off the wall one. Yeah. Uh, if you like a bakery, um, there's a bakery south of us about two hours. It's called Cops and Donuts. <laughs> so this there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of irony with this bakery. The bakery is like 100 years old. and It was going to go out of business back in like 2008. And so some cops in this little town of Clare decide to go in and buy this bakery and save it. So they changed the name from, it's called City Bakery to Cops and Donuts. That's a great name. So you know how you go to, you know how you go to a bakery and they have day old donuts? Uh -huh. um, so they're day old donuts. They're in another case and they call them parolees. <laughs> parolees. <laughs> yeah. And then, so anyways, um, you know how Autumn, Autumn said earlier that I like the Dukes of Hazard and all the bad boy stuff? Uh -huh. So anyways, when I was down there at that bakery, they had those lick and stick tattoos. Mm -hmm. So anyways, I bought one down there and then um, I put I put one on a, on my arm there when, when I was in uniform working in the jail. And it was a, a cop that had a donut wrapped around him. <laughs> and and so anyways the one day i'm doing uh, my head count going through going through cells and then um some of the guys are coming up to the bars because they notice all the little details all the time and some of the guys are coming up to the bars and they're like Rhodes, did you get a tat and i pulled it up yeah you know this helps keep the hell's angels off my back <laughs> <laughs> and so they're all they're all laughing and and uh um it lasted like two weeks with saran wrap <laughs> yeah, cops and uh, cops and donuts. I like and prolies. That's great. That's yeah. Great. All right, I gotta ask you, and I'm gonna switch cameras here for a second because we ask all of our guests this. Whoa, this is the white Russian. I like camera. it. White Russian looks like the but but look, Josh like the white hat. cilantro team cilantro. Or not? Um, I guess I'm gonna go with not. Oh, oh. 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 Monica's not here. Yes, yeah, she is. <laughs> the wow. liver pate video has got cilantro in it, so <laughs> you're, you're really gonna be tested. <laughs> All right. Three to three. Wow. Three to well, three. Well, see, there you go. Made an ex. Made it exciting. Oh boy, this is a close game. <laughs> Man, yeah, we got to well, Charlie, you get Charlie on; he'll even it up. Can uh, uh, Stephen and uh, Charlie next? Oh, Stephen, Stephen will love it, surely. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, I think I've Josh, seen him use it in a few. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, Josh, you've been a great guest. Uh, oh, by the way, Cody does say that uh, Robert Duvall was in True Grip. So, yeah. uh, as a very young man, though, I believe. Well, yeah, it would have yeah. to be. That movie is 50 years old. So. Yeah. So. Uh, you've been a great guest. I have been looking forward to this since the day I approached you to have you on. you have anything uh, 
I'm out of questions. <laughs> and uh, there's somebody at the front door. So do you have mm-hmm. anything to uh, to add or say? Well, I really appreciate you having me on. It's kind of an honor. And it's, and it's nice meeting you as well. Your cousin there from Australia. And, uh, yeah, it's just kind of fun to share and learn more about you guys. And, and then um, who knows? Uh, we've tried to do a couple lives. It's been a little tricky, I think, with the hookups here. But I think we're trying to learn. Um, but, yeah, this is kind of fun. Yeah, well, if you ever need anything any advice or whatever just hit me up you know how to hit me up you know how to reach yeah out. so yeah i love lives i i look forward to them six and a half days a week <laughs> on wednesday mornings i'll wake up going oh i'm so tired do i really need to? and then after about 30 seconds like oh cool man let's i'm i'm so ready and then the rest of the day i'm kind of like off in la la land thinking about questions yeah. and throw everything together and you know, and trying to do my job and, uh, but it's great. It has been awesome. Yeah. I try to get on as many of your videos. And even last week when uh, you were going live, I tried to hook up with a few of the, uh, other, uh, people chatting and stuff like that. Um, well, that's how I met you. I can't, I can't always get on because I work 12 hour shifts. So if I have to work the next day, I got to get up at four 15 and it's a fast turnaround. Yeah. Um, but I remember you being on, a little bit last week, at yep. least a little I, bit. Yeah, so. I was on vacation, so it, it worked out good. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah. See, this it worked out great. Yeah. So well, and then I, tomorrow, go ahead. tomorrow's my uh, tomorrow happens to be my short day for this week, so I don't have to be in quite as early tomorrow. So that kind of worked out good for tonight. Nice. Well, you've been a great guest. I I've had a blast. I really have. Uh, I I love watching your stories. You're traveling. Um, one of these days, I've got to meet you. Yeah. Um, we thought it would be fun to player. even uh, have you out to the uh, ranch and be like the uh, a, a guest cook or something like that. Or I remember something. talking about that once, yeah. Yeah, uh, I thought it would be fun to do something like that. Yep. So. Well, thank right. you again, Josh. Um, you're always welcome, Josh, on the show. All thank right. You, Josh. I appreciate it. Did you have something else? No, just said thank you. Oh, thank, thank you. you guys. You guys it's, have a, a great week and it was a pleasure being on here tonight. It's the accent, Josh. <laughs> I know. I just nod oh, my head a lot. I, I, I nod my head a lot and go, uh huh. Yep, right, Patrick. <laughs> sometimes I sometimes I say thank you and they're thinking I'm saying F you. Oh. Uh, <laughs> I get People look at me and go, what you just said? And I said, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> hey, you have, fun, you have fun with that liver pate this week or whatever you do it. I'm not, you'll have the fun, not me. <laughs> not slow motion. Watch. Uh, all, all right, right. guys. Well, I'm going to take a three-minute break. Thank you, John. You're more than welcome to stay. Uh, if you got to go, go. But I really appreciate it. Thank you. I'm going to wrap it up because i got to get ready for work. By, it was a lot of fun, and thanks for having me on. All right. We'll talk to you later. Yeah, take care, guys. All right.